Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to take the um, the note document or notepad document, which again I'm mine is showing up as an Excel document because I've associated with Excel. We need to take that and we need to put it through this program here, which is going to analyze it and get actual FMD uh, values out of it. Um, so we'll go ahead and open this. Unlike the other program, it does not need to be run as an administrator. Um, so when you open this, because it's looking for a file from another computer um, that doesn't exist on this computer, it's likely going to pop up with this error. That's okay. Just tell it to um, stop. And it's going basically that makes it so it'll um, be ready for you to load a new file. All right, so let's just make this the full screen here. All right, so once you hit the stop, you have the, the software up and running, and it's uh, not at looking for a file at the moment. It's not analyzing anything. So what we can do is we can hit this little folder icon here, and we can find our file. So for me, let's see. Here's my file, so I'm just double clicking it. All right, so now the file um, location that it's looking for is the file that we want to analyze uh, for this particular um, analysis. And now we're just going to hit this white arrow and it will um, load that file. All right, so we have our diameters loaded here. We have our Dopplers loaded down here. Um, so uh, I believe this is the uh, the mean Doppler, not the upper or lower Doppler that it's loading. Um, it does look at the other Doppler signals, but I just can't remember which one in particular that it's loading. I, I do think it's the mean though. All right, so for this file, um, you can see looking at this diameter, it doesn't look like a whole lot. The reason it doesn't look like a whole lot is because we have a couple of random data points that uh, were just noise that it picked up. So you can see one in particular right here. Um, so what you can do with this file, or with this program, is you're going to set inclusion and exclusion uh, limits uh, for both the, uh, for, excuse me, for this diameter uh, data here. So right now, the high cutoff, so if I, you saw me here, I scrolled through this, these are all the different lines, so we have the blue lines and the red lines and the green line, but we also have some yellow lines that are a little harder to see. Um, there's one right here, so I'm moving it right now, and there's another one right here that I'm just I'm not moving much, but I am moving it. So this top line, though, if I took it above this noise point, all right. So now all of a sudden you see uh, the data does go up, it gets to that point, and keeps going. So the point of these lines, though, is to cut off those random noise spikes that you know are not um, true signals. It's just something that uh, you want to avoid analyzing. Um, so once you cut those out um, and it's drawing just the good data points, you can't really see much. So what I recommend doing is coming over to this scale here. And you can do this for any of the scales. Again, this is a lab view program. So you can do it for any of these lab view programs. So you can right click the scale turn off the, the auto scale function and now you can just type in whatever you want the scale to be so let's just say one for now so hit one hit enter and now it's starting to look a little bit more like something um, it's still probably a little too big let's bring down this yellow uh, line bring out this one just so we don't lose them when we shrink in our scale so let's make the top of the scale point, uh, point 0.4 I don't have any good data that's above that. Oops. Well, okay, there we go. And we can do the same thing down here. Let's make this, uh, let's bring this up a little bit and let's make it 0 0.2. So 0 0.2. All right. So now we have something that actually looks like um, an FMD. So there was a point during the video, we didn't see it earlier when I analyzed it because I didn't analyze the whole video. But there was a point during the cup occlusion phase where the ultrasound froze up on me for a, a short period of time, so we lost data here. Um, fortunately, we don't really care about the data during the cup uh, occlusion time. Um, sometimes we'll look at the data right before the cup is deflated, which occurs right here. But generally speaking, this 
is not a big deal. Um, we're not going to be using it. What does matter is if you ever lose the data, you want to make sure that comes in at about the same uh, size of the diameter as what it left as. That means that you didn't lose the image. You didn't. You're not uh, collecting uh, data on a slightly different version of the same vessel or even a different vessel altogether. Um, so the fact that this went away and came back before we were going to analyze the data, it's still the same approximate diameter. I, I think we're good to go here. Um, so again, though, we have this, this yellow bar that probably a little hard to see, but I'm dragging it back and forth right now. And I can go over these data points and you can see that they're turning black. That means they're being excluded um, and the data is going to, um, or the program's going to ignore that data when uh, calculating anything. Uh, so we don't want to exclude all this. So this was another little noise spike. So I tried to adjust the, to get a slightly clearer image. And what I ended up doing was losing the data, uh, losing the image for, uh, just a, a few seconds. So this is definitely a noise spike, but this here, this is the actual um, dilation profile that we're looking to try to analyze. And let's zoom in one more time on this. So let's make it, um, we'll say 0.28, not too far. Let's do 0.31 maybe, there we go. All right, so you can see this a little better now. So again, this is the physiological, um, profile of the dia diameter of the vessel that we're trying to analyze and get a value for. How much did it dilate above this baseline? Um, so we can bring this yellow bar down as far as possible without going over any of the, um, without going over any of this good data that we want to keep in. So probably down to about right there as far as we can go. Um, nothing really cut off in the bottom, but it's the same thing. You can see I can cut off, start cutting off data here, but I don't really want to do that. Um, but you can get it as close as possible to the data without cutting off any good data. And then you want to hit this horizontal cursor set. So the horizontal cursors are those yellow bars that we set um, by dragging them up and down. So once you're happy with where they are, hit that horizontal cursor set, and it's going to calculate um, the diameter of the vessel uh, moment to moment using um, uh, just the good data points that you didn't exclude using these yellow bars. And also it's going to be doing a median filter. This is right now is set to one second. You can set it to whatever you want. Um, uh, we often use either one or three seconds. Um, but right now, again, it's set to one. So the data now um, after the median filter is this blue data. So you can see the line is fairly stable, this blue line. Um, and that's what it's going to use to calculate the flow mediated flow dilation. Um, so now we need to set the, uh, the vertical cursors, which we're going to have another button to set those in a second. But we need to put them where we want them to be. All right. So we have three vertical cursors. So we had these two yellow ones that we are setting by dragging. We can also drag the vertical ones, which I'm doing right now. You can see me dragging this blue line. Um, and you want to be dragging using the this top diameter box. If you try to do it with the bottom box, it doesn't like that. It, it just won't move. Um, so you want to drag these using the top box. And so there's a green bar, a red bar, and a blue bar. A green bar goes at the beginning of your baseline. So anything before that is going to be excluded. So I want all of it for this video. There's nothing at the beginning I need to exclude. Um, so I'm dragging all the way to zero. The red bar that I'm dragging now needs to be placed at the end of the baseline period. So this uh, video had a 60 second baseline. So I'm gonna bring it to 60 seconds here. You can also, if you wanna be a little more uh, precise, which I do recommend, you can come in here and you can set it um, by just typing in what they should be at, uh, at the X value. Um, so again, the green, uh, the beginning of the baseline should be at zero. The end of baseline should be at 60 seconds because we did it per minute. Um, notice when I dragged it, it's pretty close, but it's at 59. It's probably 59 point something, but let's just be exact and say it's a 60. So 60, hit enter, and now it's at 60. And 
this blue line is going to be put where we uh, deflate the cuff at the end of the cuff occlusion period for chromium dilation. Um, you can usually tell where this is by looking at this Doppler profile, and it's where you get this sharp increase in the um, flow, but you don't want to necessarily go off that because we are going to get a value that is time to peak um, Doppler flow. Um, so if you put it right on that, it's sort of artificially making it as though the flow got uh, to its peak value immediately. And although that's uh, pretty close to being true, um, we want to do our best to set this where we want it. So um, set it to where it really should be, which was the moment we deflated the cuff. So you need to have notes on where all these things happen. Um, so for us, let's do some quick math. I'll just use my phone for a calculator. Um, so we had a one minute baseline, a five minute cost, so that's six minutes times 60 seconds. So 360 is where it needs to be set at, which is about where I had it, but let's go ahead and just type it into its exact. So 360 under this blue cursor line, hit enter. How would I do? Well, 360, enter. For some reason it's not taken. I'm not sure why. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't know why that is. So let's just drag this until we get it to 360 and we'll check it using this over here. Um, that's weird. I've never seen that do that before. But uh, either way, it'll still work. All right, so now it's at 360, so we're good to go. All right, so we already set our, uh, our horizontal cursors with the other ones and we hit the button so they're done. We can't move them anymore. Now we're about to hit the button for the vertical cursor lines. Um, which means we won't be able to do anything with those anymore. They're set, but it is going to give us um, our answers to uh, uh, or values for flow media dilation and some of the secondary values. So I'm going to hit this, and it's automatically going to bring us to this new tab, this shear tab. Um, so originally we were on the set cursor tab, now we're on the shear tab, and here are our values. So the um, actual value for flow media dilation here, so where is it? Um, percent change in diameter, so 6.498 was this person's flow media dilation. And then you have a bunch of other values here, so the average diameter of the vessel during the cuff uh, phase, the um, peak diameter after you've deflated the, uh, the cuff, the percent change, which again is our FMD score, um, the time to peak diameter, so um, this person took almost 50 seconds to get to this peak uh, diameter, um, the peak shear, so uh, 2,732, um, the time to peak shear uh, is 0 0.65 seconds, so it was pretty much instantaneously, uh, or it was pretty much instantaneous uh, as we suspected, but you again want to make sure that you set that blue cursor in the right spot and not just eyeball it. The area under the curve, which um, is a measure of shear, so it's going to go from this point where we deflated the cuff, so this is the, that same blue cursor that we had here, so it's the same thing. Um, so the point from the cuff deflation until the peak diameter of the vessel and all of this shear which is this red and purple stuff. Oh, actually, sorry, the shear is the purple. Um, so all that shear underneath this area under the curve from here to here is going to be calculated into this area under the curve shear. And then the average diameter of the baseline period, um, so that would be this period here, so from the start of the baseline to the end of the baseline. So that's everything you uh, need. Um, if you want to do other calculations, you can do so using all these values. Um, but all you want to do now is hit this output data, and it will save the data to the same location where you had the file you put into the software program. So this is the file we put in, and this is the output. And so again, if you open this, just hit yes. Again, it's looking for, it's telling you it's not a real Excel file, which we, it's not a big deal, we know that. Um, we have the file name that it, the data came from, and then all of those same um, values with the, their uh, titles uh, here, all in one convenient row. So 
take this, put it wherever you're storing your, your participant data, and that's it. So that's how to analyze a flow data dilation test. Um, if you were uh, doing uh, ultrasound for other reasons that isn't flow media dilation, you can still use the, the first software program that I showed um, in order to get uh, the diameter of the vessel moment to moment as well as the flow. That you can get all kinds of things out of that. So you can get the, the upper uh, profile of, of the flow, the lower profile, or the mean flow out of that program. And that can be used for uh, lots of purposes above and beyond just doing flow media dilation. But that is, that's pretty much it. So that's the end of the uh, tutorial here on how to do the analysis for flow media dilation. So I hope that helped. Um, you can always contact me through um, my email. Um, just go to my, uh, my professional website, which I'll have linked below this video, um, and you can contact me if you want to. All right, thanks.